asking for an appearance from a local religious leader named Ahmad Afzali. All of them originally from Afghanistan, all in this country legally. What were they allegedly planning to do? Well, we hope to get the answer to that question. Here's what we know so far. Investigators say they found detailed notes on bomb making on Najib Bolazazi's computer, the 24-year-old, and that he reportedly admitted he got weapons and explosives training from al-Qaeda. With us, R.P. Eddy, former director of counterterrorism at the White House National Security Council, and Michael Wilds is a former federal prosecutor. Michael, first to you. I spoke a bit about the evidence there, yet these three men are in court this afternoon on charges only of lying to federal investigators. Why? The government is piecing a tapestry, if you would, of cases and evidence together. At this time, you have a gentleman who is known for having been born in Afghanistan, traveled often to Pakistan, has a job of all jobs to work in an airport and have trucking and driving experience and a computer with weapons instructions in his laptop. I'm proud of our government for seamlessly putting together what it takes now between local, county, and federal law enforcement, but they are putting a case together as it in real time. And it's important that we understand that if the government, I'm an immigration lawyer by trade, if the government doesn't have proper intelligence, real assets as well as documentary assets, they will not be able to put a stronger case together as it proceeds. So it's important that we have the capability, even if you have a green card, you're not quite a citizen in this country, to track individuals for our own protection. Michael, where do you see this going then? Do you see more charges? Do you see the potential for other people being involved? You know, when you hear of an imam that speaks from both sides of his hat, it makes you wonder just how foolproof the evidence in the case is. I think that the charges are going to get stronger, and as they develop greater intelligence as far as what attack was averted, we're going to learn more. But again, as an American, as an immigration lawyer who would like to see people ride it onto the soil properly, this is our government doing its best to vet out a terrorist, and I'm proud of their efforts. Arpi, let's talk about this imam, this religious leader, Al Fazi, uh, who is the one that's going to be appearing in New York today. Authorities say that he tipped off the other two in a phone call and then lied to them when they asked him about it. Uh, did, did he possibly disrupt the plot? Will we ever know what was going on here? Well, there's some conversation about the NYPD running this, this individual as a confidential informant, and then him through that channel understanding what was happening and then tipping off uh, the terrorists, the alleged terrorists, as you just described. Uh, we will probably get to the bottom of what happened there. But it's very interesting, and it actually tells a good story that the NYPD was so involved with this investigation with the FBI right from the beginning. And in fact, they were so involved, they were bumping into each other. And that's not a bad thing. It shows that the state and locals are, are, are working diligently with the federal agencies to prevent attacks. And that's exciting. And that's some of the good news here. And there's a lot of good news here. RP, you know, the authorities were specific about saying this weekend that they had no specific information regarding timing, location, or target, or targets potentially. Uh, what do you expect to find out in court today? Well, I think in court today we're going to find out very little. The charges that are coming against them today are simply for lying to a federal officer. They're using this to hold them, and hopefully they're using this to try and lever more information out of them. The challenge is the initial discussions they had with the FBI, in which they were allegedly, allegedly lied to the FBI, were proffer discussions in which they have a certain amount of immunity as to what they offer. I but think it's critical that we figure out what is behind this plot, and the way we're going to do that is through this kind of pressure on them and also through federal intelligence and, and uh, piecing together information and evidence we find on Michael, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's very important that the government leverage whatever opportunity that it has. At the same time that they encourage people to come forward, you have to know when you deal with federal law enforcement or law enforcement for that matter that you may not lie to them and there are consequences to it. Right now, this is maybe a thin case on its face, but I have full confidence that they'll get to it. After all, wasn't 9-11 the greatest sense of vulnerability that we had, that there was all this intelligence gathering collection? But when it came to our immigration borders, when it came to seamlessness with, you know, with county sheriffs, federal law enforcement, there was a breakdown. Here you have what, in, what amounts to a very significant, very fast effort and a legal effort where the person will have a day in court. Michael Wilds, R.P. Eddy, we will watch it today as it unfolds. Thanks to you both. Pleasure. Thanks, Jane. Let's take you to uh, Florida now. Harris is looking into the manhunt for... Um